Hold on a second, Ludi. You said you have Roman Empire borders by 1526. Where are they? Well, let's click the player map mode. Booyah shaka, boys! We got all the provinces required to form the Roman Empire. We just gotta integrate Syria, France, and a few other subjects we have around Europe. But we got the borders needed. Big thanks to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring today's video and making this amazing run possible with the new E4 Domination DLC that made Spain insanely powerful, a mission tree that gave it personal union CBs over all the major nations in Europe, as well as the really powerful council mechanics. If you want to get the DLC for yourself, you'll have a link in the description. You would really support the channel massively if you use my link below, and I would really appreciate it, guys. Also, if we get seven. 7,000 likes on today's video. Once the embargo is lifted and I'm allowed to release more videos for Domination, we're gonna have a really juicy Ottoman run that puts this one to shame by comparison. And I am trying to get to 170,000 subscribers, so if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. Would really help me out so much to reach this goal by the end of April. E4 1.35 Domination has changed a lot of things, and I really mean a lot of things, starting from the basic army composition, to the units available, to the privileges and the estates and so many other things have changed that it's basically a completely new game now and it's absolutely amazing. Take note, a lot of the things that you're gonna see in today's video might be different by the moment that uh, the DLC actually comes out. Well, I've done about 9 or 10 test runs as Castile before starting recording this one. Castile's starting situation in the Domination DLC is absolutely insane. The new mission tree that they have is amazing. So many permanent modifiers so many unique abilities that Castile slash Spain have received with this new DLC that it makes it an absolutely ridiculously strong nation as well as super enjoyable and fun nation to be playing as. I actually chose to do my video on Castile because I feel like Castile is the most versatile out of all the nations that have been covered in the Domination DLC by far since it both has the option of going into Europe, restoring the Roman Empire really quickly or going into the New World or just playing super ridiculously tall or just being an insanely overpowered nation with just the Iberian Peninsula and a few colonies. Depends on your playstyle, but the truth is that if you navigate this mission tree here, you get some insane mechanics like the system of councils, government reform, which we'll go into a little bit later down in this video. A lot of permanent stuff as well like the Fecho del Imperio that offers governing capacity and diplomatization minus 25% until the end of the game, which essentially means that Castile can get more diplomatic station cost reduction bonuses than uh, the Austrians can now or you can just add it up on top of it you know you can start at Castile and go down and form Austria if you want later down the line right nobody says you have to form Spain right so there's that as well there's also the insane Tercios government reform which gives you the ability to recruit the special Tercio units that the uh, Spanish now have and the Castilians have as well as it offers army professionalism and tradition and until the end of the game you get reinforcement speed army drill game modifier that affects the uh, Tercio Shows. There's a ton of claims also on the lowlands, on the Austrians, on all of the Italian peninsula, and you even get 10 power projection permanently. That means that in the mid to late game, when you have struggles getting up to 50 power projection to get the plus one uh, mana for each of the uh, mana categories, you will 100% have above 50 because of this particular mission, Rain in France. You do start with the Infantes of Aragon disaster. We'll navigate this and I'll explain exactly how to get rid of it as soon as possible. Before we do that though, we're gonna do our estates. Take note, there are so many new privileges now. It's insane to keep track of. I think they added like five or six new privileges for each of the estates. But that being said, we can have up to six maximum privileges now. So we definitely have enough slots to use and to make the most out of, of course. We got a few uh, good missions we can choose from here for the agenda. I'm gonna go for converting Vizcaya to Castilian. That's fairly easy to do. We just gotta click button is Maximus. You know what though? I'm also going to destroy the tax dev, making this a little bit cheaper to convert it. I think this is the only Basque province we have, right? Aside from uh, Navarra. That being said, I am going to get an alliance with Navarra and I will be Diplo 
vassalizing Navara as soon as possible. So every month I'll go for something else to improve my relations with them. So I get 190 before they become a junior member of Aragon, which can happen pretty early on. So we got to be careful with that, of course. I'm also going to assign my rivals Morocco. Sadly, Burgundy is apparently a rival. So I'm just going to go for the nations that rivaled me. I'll rival them back. The English are possibly a good ally. Also, I have to say I love the new English flag, by the way. I think that uh, Paradox went for a really good option here when it came to the English flag. I need to merge up my armies. We're going to bring both uh, army groups over to Madrid and we're going to assign the general as well because we're going to get a lot of rebels from our disaster of the uh, Infantes of Aragon. So now let's go back and let's do our estates, shall we? As you probably imagined, I'm going to be giving out the plus one mana privilege for all three of the estates, meaning we get zero crownlands from day one. going to seize crownlands and we're going to go up to 5% crownlands, which is not much, but it's better than zero, right? A lot of our missions actually require us to have 40-50% crownlands, so we will have to take care and every five years seize crownlands. We also can gain some more crownlands from missions and from developing provinces as well as from seizing provinces from other countries, so we will have to expand a little bit at the same time. We really want to get rid of the factionalist nobility privilege that we start with. This thing is really not nice and it's one of the reasons why we get the Infantes of Aragon. However, it's going to take a while until we get rid of it. It's not instant, so we're going to have to bear in mind and work our way, navigate the mission tree to make it a little bit easier after we get the Infantes of Aragon mission to uh, get rid of this particular privilege. I also really like the new privileges that they added, which basically scale with the amount of loyalty that the estates have. So for example, Lauberger economic freedom allows us to get provincial trade power and merchants trade power. And this fluctuates based on the amount of loyalty. We can get a debuff on this if we don't have loyalty with this particular estate. We have similar privileges like that for the nobility and the uh, clergy. For example, here the nobility can give us a prestige decay up to minus 1%, which is huge. Similarly, the clergy can give us a reform progress growth up to 25%. I'm going to give this privilege out right now. 10% progress growth that we're getting as of now with the current loyalty is a huge deal. It means that we're going to get our government reforms done a ton faster now. And government reforms are really important, especially with Domination DLC. We get extra government reforms now, extra tiers that is, and they have been rebalanced significantly. So we will uh, dedicate a little bit of time for overviewing the government reforms in this video as well. We also want to get rid of Enrique. Now with the latest patch, Enrique is a 201. However, he's still absolute dog schnapple, so we're going to get rid of him. It's going to cost us 50 prestige, which is why we're going to be giving out the uh, patronage of the arts after we disinherit him since we gain 25 prestige instead of 15 if we give it now. Meaning we only start with minus 16 prestige, which is actually quite acceptable in my opinion. Of course, I'm also going to give out the advisor class reduction privileges for all three of the estates. It is only minus 15% now, so keep that in mind. And also, if you see anything in this particular video that's different from your particular version of the game, remember, I got this early access quite a while before the uh, DLC came out, so maybe some modifiers changed in the meanwhile. Keep that in mind and adapt to your particular playthrough. Some of these privileges also allow us new decisions like right of donation allows the decision to make generous donation where we gain 10 loyalty with the clergy in exchange for some money. That's going to be available if we give out this privilege. Take note though, it is going to give us 5 influence, but at the same time we get uh, prestige per development from missionary and missionary maintenance costs minus 100% depending on what loyalty we have with our estate. Religious diplomats has also been changed. Instead of giving us flat relations with every country, we now get plus 10 opinion of same religion as well as others of the same religion get opinion of our country and we get plus one diplo reputation so it's not plus 25 uh, relations with same uh, religion countries anymore it's a little bit different now it's also a pretty decent idea to give out the increased levies for the army because we do start with 57 uh, percent of our crownlands belonging to the nobility so we are getting significant amounts of manpower from this privilege now and of course supremacy over the crown so we get the uh, loyalty equilibrium above 50 with the, all of the estates. And I'm going to give out the private trade fleet so I get cheaper light ships. I will be building a ton of light ships since we want to be uh, the dominant trade power in the Sevilla trade node, our primary home trade node. It seems like because the uh, French rivaled us, we can ally the Austrians. I'm going to go for that alliance, obviously. I'm also going to go for the Aragonese as an ally because realistically speaking, there's a very high chance that we're going to get the union over Aragon if we follow the right chain of events. Of course, we're going to get that royal marriage with Navarra too. We want to push for the 190 relations as 
soon as possible. No relations with the Portuguese because we will enforce a union over them as soon as we get the Aragonese lands, but we still have one more diplo relations slot open so we can get an extra ally. Say, for example, we could get Tunis temporarily just so that they don't ally with the Moroccans, which would likely happen if uh, we don't get the alliance with the Tunisians. This way, with Tunis as an ally, we have an easy war against Morocco and Granada, since likely Granada will ally Morocco rather than anybody else. Well, I kind of expected this. Aragon's gonna break the alliance with me because they just got domineering attitude. I kind of did it intentionally because I saw you guys asking in the comment section, how come in my runs, Aragon gets domineering attitude and they break the alliance, but in your videos, they don't loot. Here's the mistake you guys made and I made as well in today's video. Because I got a royal marriage with them, it means that they can claim the throne as I do not have an heir and I have the same dynasty as them. Essentially, Alfonso over here wants to get a PU over me and that's why he got the domineering attitude and that's why he's canceling the alliance. Now, this of course is easily fixable by getting an heir or by just not getting a royal marriage with the Aragonese in the first place, essentially. That's it. That's all you gotta do. We are actually making progress towards the Castilian Civil War. However, <laughs> first we gotta navigate the Infantes, which will trigger in three months, give or take. On the bright side, guys, we managed to get 190 relations with the uh, nation of Navarra, meaning they are now our first Vasalski, and it also means that they will not be a junior member of Aragon, which would have meant that would have been a wasted Diplo slot once we got the union over Aragon. Now, the Infantes of Aragon disaster just triggered. There's two options. You can stand with the king, which means you lose lose one stability, but it does mean that once we enact the Infantes of Aragon mission, it's going to lower the negative effects of the uh, factionalism nobility privilege. Remember this bad boy over here. If we stand with the Infantes, then it's going to make it worse. So we will be standing with the king. Take note, however, in order to get rid of this disaster, we need to comply with two specific things. We need to have zero stability, which we can get fairly easily, and we need to get rid of all the rebels. Like I said earlier, I had a lot of test runs before this one and if you don't do it super fast and I'm talking super fast then you can end up in a spiral of negative admin points and negative stability so you will never get rid of it you literally have to restart your game once these trigger rush for these rebels take them out take the provinces back and try to get to zero stability as soon as possible that's all you need to do in order to get rid of this disaster and get back on track this right here is exactly what I'm talking about we are about to get one more minus stability and extra rebels I'm gonna pay the ducats and prestige hit for this, but take note, I can get the same event trigger almost instantly after I've clicked that, so it is RNG, and you might have to reload the game if it happens, it's your choice. I'll teach you guys a little trick here, we got a few more disaster events here that will destroy us basically, I'll lose another one stability, 20 autonomy or 8 pretenders or whatever, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna get zero stability, which means I instantly get rid of the Infantis progress here, so I get... 20 legitimacy, 9,000 manpower, and 5% roundlands. I still have to deal with these two, however, so I'm gonna get the prestige debuff, sadly, and I'm also going to get the 57 ducats on the minus. It is what it is, boys, but hey, we got 9,000 manpower, so we got that going for us. Plus, getting rid of the Infantes means that we have only one stability left to get to do our first mission, the Infantes of Aragon, and once we do it, we get the good outcome here. The reality is that if you choose to side with the Infantes in the disaster, you will not be getting the union over Aragon from the event. It disables the event, so it's impossible for you to get the union over Aragon. You have to manually enforce the union, which means that you're going to get a lot of aggressive expansion, and it's going to be costly, so it's really not going to be very much worth it. Feels bad, man. We just got the Merino Wool event, <laughs> meaning we lost 4% crownlands. We were back to 6% or 5% crownlands, and we also got the Castilian Civil War <laughs> about to trigger. Minus 82 prestige is also pretty papega, bro. Oh, well, it is the new meta for Castile, sadly. It does start like this, and you have to handle it. But after the uh, rough initial start, we're gonna snowball like crazy. You'll see once we um, get rid of these initial two disasters. You really need to do these the earlier, the better you do them. Because afterwards, the world is your oyster. Remember that we also have the gold mine in La Mancha. So financially, this is gonna help massively. Also, we have a lot of new holy orders. Look at all these bad boys here. We can assign all around our country. Local defense, a dice roll bonus, 
manpower plus 5% and hostile movement speed minus 10. Attrition for enemies and defensiveness. Construction cost and fort maintenance is an absolutely great one. Imagine 50% cheaper forts is insane because it snowballs later forts are also 50% cheaper. So instead of paying 10 ducats for a late game fort, you're going to pay 5 ducats, which is a huge amount of money. You also can get prosperity growth passively and unrest reduction, local resistance reformation and uh, centralized state cost reduction, institution growth and missionary maintenance, development cost modifier, governing cost and local tax, or a lot of other ones. These four ones we cannot do right now because we do not have the admin points. You need 50 admin points, 50 diplo or 50 military based on the holy order. But the great part is that these bonuses are a lot more varied now. And until we get to any of that, we're going to invest a little bit in our Mancha gold mine, develop this bad boy. We want to bring it up to 10 production development, which equals to 6.66 ducats. Truce is over with the Granada, which means we're going to be attacking them. I'm also going to Kobolid raid Morocco because I plan on taking some uh, provinces from Morocco. And sadly, our Tunisian uh, friendos are now our enemies because for some reason Tunis decided they wanted to ally Granada. We got a little bit of a case of uh, divide and conquer here where uh, the Moroccans actually tried to attack us. But it's all Gucci boys. We have pretty strong units. We should be able to fend them off. I swear we managed to get one stability just in time for the civil war to start. <laughs> Bro, that is like, wow, just big brain moment right there. So now we did the Infantes of Aragon because we got one stability. And as consequence, for the next 25 years, we're getting stability cost modifier reduction, legitimacy, and estate influence minus 10%, as well as we get one of each mana points. But our leader, if we were to go with the Infantes, the functionalist nobility would have intensified in their effects, and we would have gotten the restoration of union on Aragon. But now we'll just get that restoration of union the good old fashioned way via having a different gender leader. And it seems like Enrique is about to uh, embark on his civil war again. Boy, is there a lot of civil wars in this nation at the start, isn't there? Look at all these bad boys in the north here. So in order to get rid of them, and let's also actually get this whilst we can. In order to get rid of this, we have to have one stability. So that means we need to get about 200 uh, admin points to do that. And less than one province is controlled by rebels, meaning we have to get rid of these bad boys. So we're going to have to focus on uh, finishing the uh, Granadan War. Oh, looks like we just managed to take uh, Granada or Malacca. Ah, yeah, my rock and skoom. Yeah, troops and no match for my Scottish speaking Castilian boys. Okay, just don't think about it too much. And with the help of our brave fleet, we managed to take Tangiers, securing our foothold in the North African continent, meaning we might actually be able to push for these uh, claims that I have here. We've taken a lot of loans. I'm going to be taking the five burger loans and I'm going to be paying off my old loans with these new loans so I get rid of the interest. And I think I might actually have enough stability what is it looking like we got one and two we do have enough stability we're also going to lower the war exhaustion and that way we got rid of the uh, castilian civil war meaning we gain one stability going up to two stability this also of course paves the way for isabella to come to throne or to come to power really take note i highly recommend you keep your units close to your other units in north africa because fez is a very easy fort for them to defend they will definitely push it they pushed it in my run like three or four times already so having Having this back up next to your uh, units over there will make a difference, especially if you manage to get military tech 4. And we're also going to be getting the reinforced royal authority, which gives us monthly reform progress 0.20 for 20 years, meaning we're now getting essentially 0.94 every month. So within a couple of years, we should have the first reform enacted. Come on, fall at 7%. No? Okay, well, at least I tried. Fall at 21%, pretty please? No? No? Okay. Hey, look at that. Sale of titles, meaning we got one stability, getting up to three stability finally man only 470 days well actually this fell faster than malacca did even 35.094 an oddly specific amount can we go to 46 war score no an unconditional surrender from granada means that we can enforce our deal now and our deal is of course the entirety of granada looks like morocco tlemch and tunis have something against it who actually gives us schnapps here because i don't i'm in spain we give tequila wait was tequila invented back in the 1400s 
I, I doubt that. If you guys know when tequila was made, I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. Looks like we now can do Reclaim Andalusia and we can convert the religion to Catholic as well as Granada loses cores on all of those provinces. We lose one stability from that, but we get rid of the Moors and we avoid any future troubles with the people of Granada since we've expelled them out of our country, essentially. Since we've gained a little bit of uh, crownlands, we can lower the autonomy now. And by lowering this autonomy, we're going to get a ton of particularists, but we're also going to get a lot more money and a lot more manpower from our provinces. I would recommend doing this when provinces autonomy reaches around 18 to 20 percent, as long as you have, say, 15 to 20 percent crownlands. In my case, I have 16 percent, but I'm going to get another 5 percent very soon. And I actually just noticed something. I got an event pop out about Epirus and Byzantium. How is Byzantium not dead already? Looks like they got a truce with the Ottomans too. And it's Serbia is not even... Oh my god. Oh, it's like asking me to attack it. I swear I didn't even plan to do this. I don't even know if it's worth it at this point because the Byzantines lost Constantinople. And that's kind of the thing that makes the Turks insanely powerful to be fair. But I'm so enticed to attack Byzantium right now and vassalize them. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna think about this for a little bit because this is a unique opportunity right here. Also, what the F? We got eight ducats from lowering those uh, provinces autonomy. That is huge. If I do attack Byzantium, the issues I have is that I'm a little bit behind with my admin and diplo, so I would still be behind with my admin and diplo afterwards, let's face it. The diplo is because I've been developing La Mancha mine and so on, but the admin is because I'm um, pouring up and the stability hits that I've been taking because of the various civil wars. I am going a little bit over my uh, naval force limit with light ships, but it's worth it. Light ships are the bread and butter of my trade fleet, so I need as many as possible. Don't mind going over the force limit a little bit for it. Because of all those juicy modifiers, we managed to get tier 2 reformed super fast. We already have it. And in my particular case, because I desperately need to get rid of nobility influence, I'm gonna get the uh, second reform for the tax modifier, mostly because of I want to get rid of the influence of the nobility. They had 92 prior to this, so it's pretty significant uh, influence that they have that we need to lower, essentially. And we just got an alliance with the Pope, meaning we did our estates agenda, but we also want to do our mission, Holy See Politics. We got to get 50 papal influence. We have 45 right now, and we also got to get 150 relations with them, so that's fairly easy to do. We're going to continue to improve relations with the Pope. That's pretty much it in order to do that mission. Oh my god, they're at war with Epirus now. They're defender against Epirus. They got zero units! Oh my god, dude. Oh, I have to do it. I have to do it. I have to do it. Oh my god, I really have to do it. I'm going to lose so much admin points, aren't I? Well, looks like we got some rebels to get rid of first. <laughs> I expected some noble rebels. Not that many noble rebels, to be fair, though. But we have exterminado the rebels fairly easy. Now, uh, we gotta unsiege this stuff as well. Split this up in half. And you boys come here. We are a definite paradox here, guys. We got military tech 5, but still on admin diplo 3. If that's not ironic, I don't know what is really. No freaking way. Isabella of Castile can take over as our heiress. I feel like it's a good idea to attack Byzantium. I know, I know, a lot of the peeps in the chat gonna be like, yo, you don't have admin points and you're wasting another two stability. What is wrong with you, Ludi? I have a problem, okay? My problem is Byzantium and I need Byzantium to be mine. I'm collecting it, alright? Alright, boys, Expeditionary Force, Delta Force 8.579, because Delta Force 6 has already been taken, so we gotta choose a new name. Oh, now you actually recruit units? You were not recruiting units when you were fighting Epirus, were you? But now you decided to recruit them, huh? Seeing a little bit of a bias in this uh, particular region. Wait, what? Aragon's now at war with the Moroccans. Bro, what the F, man? What are you guys trying to take from them? Wait, no, it's Tafilalt Independence War, and Aragon's helping Tafilalt. Oh, hello, Morocco's losing all of their vassals. Meanwhile, it's uh, it's a pain, but uh, yeah, this, this fortification will eventually fall, let's say. All right, so we can force religion and vassalize because they're pretty small right now, and uh, that's pretty much it. I don't think I want anything else from them. Release vassals. No, that's it. That's it. Oh, we get 14 prestige hell yeah and no coalition whatsoever that is the uh, best part really in my opinion and it lo looks like we also have uh, a little war against Epirus now which means we get extra provinces plus because we have two subjects we can give out the strong duchies privilege meaning we get two extra diplo relations and we get liberty desire and subject minus 10 percent the real question now is do we directly own this stuff or do we give it to byzantium if we directly own it it's 
not really much of an issue if we give it to Byzantium. It's kind of the same thing because this is a defensive war. It's not a reconquest war, right? So it's kind of pointless giving it to Byzantium, except if we give it to them, they core it. So yeah, fine. You know what? I'll give it to them. I'll keep the island of uh, Cephalonia for myself because they don't have a core in this anyway, right? But we'll do this and this, and that should be fairly cheap for me to core up as well. There you go. Only 24 admin points to core it is literally nothing really. Wait, what? The Ottomans are actually getting their asses handed to them by Albania, Venice, Naxos, and her to Govina. Uh, eh, okay. <laughs> Really? Okay. You know what? I feel like it's time for me to bring more units in Byzantium and get back our cores for our little Byzantine Vasalski here. We are gonna make a small detour first. I want to wait for the Moroccan separatists to spawn so I can get rid of them and then I don't need to worry about separatists in these areas and I can just have an easy war against the Ottomans. Looks like we got the jousting tournament too. That again is gonna be of huge help against the Ottomans. They're still at military tech four so there is a ch Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Ottomans have only 16,000 units. What? Why? Okay. Yo, I'm, I'm gonna actually do this. I'm gonna trigger these rebels because I really want to attack these guys, right? I swear I didn't plan this. I swear I did not even know that they would spawn there, man. I love this campaign. I actually really love this campaign right now. What can I say, uh, Marrakesh? Thank you very much for getting rid of my rebels. And let's bring our units over to the uh, Balkans because it's time to declare war on the Otto Bros. Hey, Cadiz is going to be the seat of a new cardinal. And we get one admin development in every province with the cardinal. We don't have any, do we? How many cardinals do we have? We have one in Sevilla, one in La Mancha, and one in Madrid. I mean, that's three free development i guess oh snaps we can call an off yo this is just it's not even any sort of a challenge anymore let's just crush these boys and they still haven't got military take five but i'm guessing they're close to it though so we got to be careful here ottoman and truppenstein if it happens you surround it come up with your artillery units holster I, I don't even know what you would be doing with your artillery units imagine this is gonna fall like a second before we manage to reach that that would be the most poo poo time yeah they're getting minus two terrain because they are the attacker in this particular uh, situation since they're attacking the fort in Kruja, which is why I attacked them here, because I knew I was gonna win. Oh man, Venice is taking lead of the siege for real. I guess I have to wait now, um, for them to siege this down. Oh no! Slack and recruitment standards has been disabled because I went down to zero professionalism. Well, oh, oh, okay. Aragon's going for the Union Restoration. I hope they get it. That way, when I get the Aragonese Union, I don't need to worry about Naples also. But yeah, the way that it works now in 1.35 is Slack and recruitment standards gives you a bonus, which allows allows you to recover your manpower a lot faster, 100% faster. So I was actually gaining close to a thousand units per month with this enabled, but you need to have professionalism to actually uh, get this because it drains 1% professionalism. All right, looks like they made their uh, peace deal. So let's see, actually, what peace deal did they make? Because they didn't take any provinces from the Ottomans, did they? Honestly, I'm very surprised that they didn't take a single province. Like, what's the point of the war if you're not going to take snaps from them, right? And I just realized the Austrians have 44,000 units definitely a step up from uh, previous versions of uh, what the f is going on here why is moravia a thing oh dude did they lose like a war with the poles and release moravia or something holy snaps what is up with this game bro have to say i'm a little bit disappointed with my fleet we actually got our asses handed to us so i cannot cross over to anatolia meaning i gotta make do with the peace deal that i have right now i'm gonna be getting the lands for the byzantines i'm not taking constantinople back because it would be too much war score but i'm taking these two provinces as such i am preventing the Ottomans from accessing the majority of their provinces in uh, the Balkans. So if they get rebels, the rebels might even break away and establish an independent free Bulgarian nation. It was a fairly easy war. We were pretty sneaky and we took advantage of their situation to be fair. But sometimes you got to do these things because now with the Byzantines established back in this particular area, we've destroyed any future superpower that the Ottomans might have been. Saint proclaimed... <laughs> Well, is it Saint Lubishtein? Wait a second, I just realized Castile actually has a female leader, Candela de Trastamara, which is gonna come of age in one year. She's 14 right now. So that means, because I have a male leader and they have a female leader in one year, I'll be getting the Iberian wedding roughly around 1465 whenever they the lady becomes of age. All I gotta do is just wait and I gotta get ready for the war with the Portuguese after. I'm also gonna be doing my uh, flag 
ship, trade power per ship and fleet, of course, movement speed and privateering, the good old trinity, as I like to call it, of trade. You know what I'm saying? Trinity of trade, boys. Need to work on that name a little bit, maybe. Excuse me, what? The ruler of France has died without a male heir, and they've gotten. Oh, dude, they became a junior partner of Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what? That means I can get the Union from the uh, Bretonians. It's gonna be 99 aggressive expansion, but it, it, bro, it, this is 100% worth it. I'm so... Oh my god, I did not want to restore the Roman Empire, but it's like serving me on a plate all the provinces I need. A Union with the freaking French right now is literally more than 30% of the Roman Empire provinces, bro. Come on. Come on, really? Why are you doing this to me, game? I was only trying to have a chill colonial game here, enjoy going into the new world, and following my mission tree, and you freaking give me a succession war with the French. Come on, dude. And whilst it wasn't 1465 like I predicted, it was 1466, the fact that we have a male leader on our country and the, the Aragonese have a female leader triggered the Iberian wedding event. Remember, if you go for the bad option at the start of the campaign now, you're not gonna get this event anymore, so you wanna be supporting the king. Let us bind our dynasty with theirs, and that means we also got the uh, Neapolitans as our PU, since the Aragonese enforced their union over Naples a while back. Get rid of these uh, pretender rebels or whatever they are, noble rebels, and continue our expansion into here. It's gonna take a while. It's not an easy war. The good part is that they have a hundred 100% liberty desire, so they are not willing to fight against me that much, but they will defend their provinces. I just need to make my way to the Bretonian lands and take a few other forts on the way so I can actually get the war score to enforce on the Bretons. And it looks like the Aragonese already started helping us with the uh, French over here. Let's uh, use our fleet so we get a little bit of an advantage in the Gulf of Lyon. All right, now that there's a peace between uh, the uh, Hungarians and the Poles, we can call in the Austrians on our side. Check out what the Hungarians did to the the poles they've literally just snaked all around cucked over the poles from even entering the bohemian lands in the future literally the most big brain thing i've ever seen the ai do <laughs> and the brandenburgians also have managed to fully take out pomerania and danzig so there's a slight chance we might see pressure form in our particular game this is truly not your typical map that's for sure speaking of i want to get my next tech here but i need to adopt the institution first so i am going to get my burger loans again. You go indebted to the burgers. Oh yeah, Snokey got enough money now to get this bad boy. And that means we can get Tech 5 for admin. Having Isabel on the throne now also is helping out massively. We're getting 14 mana points for admin. 11, but soon to be 12. Uh, Diplo, actually, you know what? I could probably promote this guy to level 3. Yep, because it's only 4.9 ducats. Same goes for this guy. I can promote him to level 2. We should still have an A-OK -okay economy. We do, for sure we do. The struggles of a war like this are pretty obvious. I managed to make my way to the Britain lands, but in the meanwhile, they took over the fort that allowed me retreating back into the Iberian lands. So I gotta take back that fort now <laughs> afterwards, or I'm basically cut off. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me right now? No, 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 no. Yetus Fetus Maximus. No freaking way am I gonna let this creature on my throne ever. I do need to get a uh, positive prestige. I'm not gonna do it now. I need the prestige that I have for the war, but I will try and get um, rid of this once I have 50 prestige later on. Let's go get that juicy union over the French and we're getting 83 aggressive expansion. Basically, not really much of aggressive expansion with anyone. And now, boys, we essentially are 25% of Europe. And I swear to God, this is likely gonna turn in a Roman Empire restoration run because it's just we're, we're so close to it right now. It's insane. Now, the big problem is gonna be that we're gonna have to improve relations with the French here. We need to make these boys loyal to us and they're not so loyal. 72 on the minus is a big no-no in my opinion. Set everybody also to uh, siege down stuff and I can also start integrating my vassals why not I'm gonna have to cancel this first and I'm gonna have to give out the um, nobility integration policy which means that I get no diplo reputation hit once I integrate these guys but it does mean the French are gonna be even more disloyal now so we got that going for us also thanks to Isabella we've caught up with all of our technologies now we are ahead of tech basically with everything that was insanely fast integrating Navara we also got the uh, plus one diplo rep and the papal 
four-legged, so that also helped out a lot. I've also just finished uh, expanding infrastructure in Granada as well as in uh, Villa Dolid, which means that I now can do a law and order mission that offers governing capacity in all of my states minus 5% and monthly reform progress flat 0.10. That is a huge amount. Look at this now, boys. We're getting 1.17 reform every single month. Absolutely brilliant right here. It means that we're going to be getting our reforms done significantly faster than any other country in the game. We seem to be getting this event quite a little bit. This is the second time I got it as well earlier from the Navarans in the initial part of the campaign. Not sure if they increased the chance of it happening, but I'm not complaining. I like it. And I don't care if Byzantium gets extra liberty desire. They're pretty loyal as it is. Let's face it. We're going to go for claims on Aragon, which gives us the restoration of union on Portugal. And because we also have the uh, Neapolitan lands, we can get the other claims on the rest of the Italian peninsula. Essentially, we have, well, not the rest, most of the Italian peninsula we have claims on right now. And we also can do rain in France because we got the union over them, meaning for the rest of the campaign, we have at least 10 permanent power projection. So we're never going to go below 50. It seems like mission reward power projection permanent is plus 25. Did I get another 15 from another mission? Or is this actually plus 25, but it only says plus 10? Again, guys, this is very early access, so it might be different. I will also make some inquiries, and I'll leave a comment in the comment section below with all the FAQs. Whatever's changed, I will mention in the comment section. Now, let's go ahead and enforce this union on the Portuguese. Take over Evora. One thing that's really important to take note of whenever you get the union over the Portuguese is that you actually wait until they have the exploration idea unlocked. If you don't have the exploration ideas unlocked, then the problem that follows is the fact that uh, they will not pick the exploration ideas and they're not going to start a colonial empire. But in my case, they already have two ideas in exploration, meaning that they have started uh, exploring and colonizing the new world most likely. Now we also can do this mission here, recover Portugal, and it's going to give us a lot of uh, mana points, stability as well. Now that we also got the Portuguese Union, we can do continue the Reconquista as well as uh, convert Iberia missions, and that means we got some more claims here, meaning we can attack the Moroccans. By the way, we have infrastructure, court ideas, and mercenary ideas as the new ones, and we have some rebalancing, like quantities more viable than it was before in 1.34. We got 33% national manpower and 33% land force limit once we fully unlock it. However, if I'm going to go for the Roman Re Empire restoration, I am going to need some uh, decent armies. I'm going to go for aristocratic first, and I just remember to delete uh, Yeetus Fetus here. I mean, to, to send to boarding school Yeetus Fetus. That's where she's going. Oh! Oh, dude, we managed to do Armies of Iberia, which gives us some temporary insanely good bonuses. But the best part is that this leads down the line to assembling the Tercios once we have 15 barracks and have reached level 4 in government reforms, as well as it's not Age of Discovery. So this one we can only get in the next stage. Interesting. We also can get the claims on most of the English provinces. Okay, we just need to have more or equal heavy ships than the English. Alrighty, I see what's going on here. I see what's going on. Essentially. Essentially, the Spanish really do have all the missions they need to form the Roman Empire, and it's just glorious, let's face it. Invade England, once we get all of that, we get power projection and papal influence. Okay, that's not very impressive, not gonna lie, but I guess it's better than nothing, right? Somebody say, uh, Morocco? Well, no, sir, it's actually the Spanish colony of Shmubi. That's, that's where we're renaming, uh, Morocco to. I'm having such a hard time deciding between the various holy orders. They're all so good, man, like, they give such amazing bonuses. It is situational, too, but once you establish it, you keep it forever, right? So it's really a smart idea to just go for something that's going to help out the most, like the development cost reduction. That, but then the governing cost also helps the entire campaign. So maybe construction cost also is pretty good. I don't know. It's just one of those big dilemmas that I, I got right now. That being said, though, one thing is for sure. If there's provinces in which I'm going to have defensive fortifications the entire campaign, then I'm going to go for the fort maintenance minus 50% because 50% fort maintenance in provinces like these is an absolute no-brainer. You have to get those. The time has arrived. Let's go and uh, release the Bulgaria once more into the fray, Bulgarioski. They are busy right now fighting against Akoyunlu or Karakoyunlu, so we got that going for us. I suspect most of their armies are already here, meaning that I'm gonna have a fairly easy time getting a hold of the entirety of the Balkans whilst they're busy in that area. And the cool part is we can also do a naval barrage on Constantinople because of the amount of ships that we have blocking this strait here. I mean, we're like a few months into the war and we haven't fought a single Ottoman army 
so they are a hundred percent struggling with the Karakoyunlu war here. You know, the funny thing is that nowadays most people think that Istanbul is the capital of uh, Turkey, but reality is that Ankara is actually the capital of Turkey. <laughs> Istanbul, sure, it was historically the capital of the Ottoman Empire, right? After Edirn, but uh, but no, no, Ankara is the capital, boys. How many of you did not know that Ankara is the capital? Be honest, answer in the comment section. I'm really curious to see this. I think we have enough worth court to get what we want to get. Yep, we do. 92%, 135, 134. Get back one of our diplomats so we can actually enforce this. And I believe that is everything in order to get the Ottomans out of the Balkans. There you go. Normal Ottomans in the Balkonium. And I didn't give this to the Byzantines. Oh, God. Oh, I forgot Avlana too. Um, you didn't see nothing, did you? No, you, you you saw nothing here. They're out of the Balkans completely. They totally don't have one random province in uh, in uh, Albania. We are able now to get the uh, personal union CB on the uh, Austrians, and I don't have a truce with them anymore. But I'll wait because I would be getting way too much aggressive expansion with uh, Catholic nations. I already have 18 overall, up to 20 something aggressive expansion. So instead, I'm gonna be attacking and getting back the courts from my Moroccan vassal. And whilst I'm doing this war the AE is gonna go down with the rest of the boys which in turn means that um after I'm done with this particular war I can start the war against the Austrians and enforce my personal union with no coalition in sight that being said I'm also gonna take the city of Tunis from these guys because I need Tunis in order to form the Roman Empire and because of trade reasons also it's probably obvious by now but whenever you get this event always go for the first option the inflation is neglectable compared to the amount of admin points that you're gonna be getting or whatever points you're gonna be getting for that matter all right we got Tunis meaning we can uh, take the city of Tunis as well now and we're gonna be asking for trade power war reparations all the juicy stuff from here because we want to make sure that we get all the trade power from Tunis into our trade node in Sevilla and for these bad boys here we're gonna do a full annexation also taking all the money that we can take of course and uh, let's go that's pretty much it with the province of Tuat once we fully uh, colonize this area and we are of course gonna be taking care of the natives we're gonna have access to the uh, sub-saharan African bits which is where a lot of gold mines reside. This has to be the most surprising Hisan Kaifa AI I've ever seen. They actually fully annexed Ako Yunlu. This is pretty much the strat as uh, Hisan Kaifa to survive. I'm just very surprised to see them actually enacting this here. And we are ready to click the crown of Austria, meaning we got the restoration of Union against these bad boys. And the juicy bit, look at this. They have Bohemia and Hungary as junior partners, meaning we're gonna get Bohemia and Hungary as our own unions. And I'm also in the process of making these guys my vassal diplomatically because once I do enforce the uh, vassalage I'll be able to reconquer all of the lost provinces they had and these are significant high development provinces too and you know what else since it's extremely easy winning this war against the Austrians I'm gonna be attacking the Burgundians also to get the cores back for my beloved French personal union let's see 75 basically holy snaps almost everybody in the HRE is gonna be in a coalition against me all right let's go enforce this bad boy it was fairly easy to do as well we basically just targeted their uh, fortifications and while they were busy sieging down my Balkan provinces I got the vital forts I needed to get the war score and to enforce that peace deal without destroying too many of their units and this is really important because I'm gonna need these units that they have to fight for me and I guess with uh, Saluzzo it, it really makes no difference whether I fully annex them or not because everyone's gonna hate my guts after this and I'm gonna have to just fight everybody let's uh let's attack the Serbians first since we have a CB on them and we can easily defeat them no one's even gonna care since they are an orthodox nation as for my beloved uh, Florentines welcome to the vassal swarm now it's time to do your duty and annex everybody around you <laughs> Starting with, of course, the Maison of Piso. What was I saying about a coalition? Quite literally, well, not all of the HRE, but most of the HRE just entered that coalition against me. This makes me think that maybe it's time for me to dismantle the HRE. I'm sorry, what now, France? You want to take Luca? I feel like everybody wants to take Luca, man. Firenze has got claims on them. I have claims on them. Naples has claims on them. France has claims on them, apparently, too. We can also begin the second phase of our expansion into the Ottoman lands. We're going to use the Holy War CB against them and we're going to absolutely destroy their nation. What's left of it anyway? The Mamluks pretty much already destroyed their nation to be fair. They only have parts of their former glory. Huda Vendigar, more like who dare? It's the Castilian army. You know, this is what should have happened historically. The world should have unified against the Ottomans. I mean, look at the amount of different flags that we have here working together for the common goal of making Castile better, really. It really 
makes my eyes watery seeing all these bad boys. The best part, however, is how we didn't even need to struggle. I honestly semi afk this entire war because I've reached the point in the campaign in which I just declare war and my vassals do all the work for me. That being said, I cannot release Karaman and feed them back the stuff anymore. Well, I could, but like I said, I have issues with my Diplo relation slots. I don't want to overdo it. And it's honestly not much of an issue for me to just own this stuff directly as I really don't care about a coalition whatsoever right now. I am going to be concentrating development in all these provinces to make it a little bit cheaper to uh, core the stuff up though. Oh my god, I got 128 overextension, 120, 126, what? Thought that would go down after, oh, oh, I see why. It's because um, I'm over my governing capacity, isn't it? All right, I mean, we can do this. Fine, there you go. And now it's back to 122. I'm just going to give some of these provinces to the Byzantines. Way better now. We have 99.2 overextension. And of course, we also just got gold rush. Let's check out how uh, Portugal's faring here. They got one colony. They got Caraibas. That means they've colonized the Caribbean already. So I'm assuming that they've also started colonizing Brazil. I don't know for sure. I don't have access to the new world information. And I'm not going to go exploration ideas. Not in this campaign. I was going to, I swear, at the start of the campaign. But considering the RNG that I had, I just molded myself on the more expansionist path of this particular run. And I almost forgot to get this particular alliance. Good good thing I remembered because I'm about to attack their ally uh, Corsica. Before I do that though, let's also attack Zemamaluks. A really easy way of uh, getting more map knowledge is requesting it from nations. So here, for example, Karakoyunlu is going to give us the provinces of Arabia. We do need to have one unit adjacent to their provinces or to the provinces that we're requesting map access for. So uh, we have that. We got these boys over here. We're also going to request for the Persian lands, obviously. Hey, we just got the 10% uh, event over here for the burgers, meaning that we can actually do uh, this mission next, the reform the Hacienda. We just need to get a level 3 treasurer, so that's easy to do. We fire this guy first, and then we hire this guy. Let's get a loan for that, I guess. Boom, shakaloki. Now we can do this mission, and it shows me the Spanish dollar, boys, meaning for 20 years, we're gonna get inflation reduction, global trade power. Isabel gains one admin and uh, next up, we got to do the new capital mission, which means we just have to expand Toledo once. And we got to build one more building in here. So let's go with, I don't know, this one maybe. There you go. That's pretty much all the requirements. Once we finish building that in there, we're going to be able to do the new capital mission, which leads to the system of councils with the insanely cool new mechanics. It's done. Now we got the new haciendas. I mean, new capital. The next step is to get more crownlands. In order to get that, there's a few ways. The main way I'm going to be using is I'm going to be developing my lands and of course seize crownlands as well. Hey, we just got the Horn of Africa from Karakoyunlu now. So let's see what's going on over here. Looks like we got Ethiopia pretty much dominating this. And Ogadin, don't they start like a two-province minor? How did they manage to get rid of a Juron, man? All right, we can get our next government reform. Tier 5 is a really special one, boys. The National Supply Limit modifier plus 20%, meaning you're going to get less attrition. You're going to have higher supply in the provinces where your armies travel. Travel. Artillery cost minus 10 and artillery barrage cost minus 25 is insane because it's 25% less mana points you're going to use to get forts a lot faster. Max hostile attrition garrison size for defenses meh. Land attrition, army drill modifier, drill losses so-so. Cavalry cost again so-so. It's situational as is the uh, mercenary cost in Condottieri. The mercenary militarization mechanics enabled here are pretty good but we have to have mercenary ideas unlocked which we didn't go for. Another really good one and one of my personal favorites is the marines which allow for 20% less marine manpower usage. That means they use 20% less sailors. It also allows you to recruit marines if you don't have that ability yet. Now, S. Castile, if you're going to go for a maritime or colonial empire, this is a really good idea to go for or reform to go for. For me, because I went the full on uh, Roma boo, I'm actually going to go for the artillery costs and barrage costs because I do barrage a lot and I will continue to barrage even more as the campaign goes along. And look at that. We just annexed Bulgaria, freeing up one more of our Diplo relation slots and it means I can start integrating the uh, Byzantines or the Moroccans next. It is going to be a little bit of aggressive expansion but what is an EU4 campaign if not a um, a little bit of aggressive expansion? <laughs> and it's time to uh, basically reduce the Papal States to one province and one province alone, the province of Rome. We're letting them keep Rome because if I take Rome as a Catholic nation I'm going to get a pretty significant debuff that I really don't want to get and I just realized I gave Naples Ancona by mistake. Well that happened 
it is what it is, I guess. You know what? I actually want to attack these bad boys here because I can take care of three leagues and Savoy. And I'm pretty sure that Savoy I can fully annex in one war. There you go. 80% to annex them. Take note. This is, of course, also because of my flexible negotiations that offers 20% less warp score cost for provinces from the diplomatic ideas. Another reason why going diplomatic early on is absolutely amazing. Incompetent cousin in Byzantium. What? <laughs> I'm giving them a 665? Can I not just get this guy as my heir or something? In the meanwhile, the Ottomans and the Mamluks are at odds with each other once more. And would you look at that? We have a second colony, Portuguese Brazil. Kind of weird how we have all these colonies that we've never even seen on the map, did we? Via our uh, Portuguese PU. Oh, dude, Switzerland just annexed the three leagues and the western part of Savoy, meaning I'm gonna have to attack the Swiss, aren't I? Which just joined the coalition against me, bruh. Big bra moment. No. Oh, my boys, we just became the Korea controller, which means we have the ability to declare crusades and we also have 10% diplo annexation cost reduction together with the aggressive expansion impact and many other things. Realistically speaking, though, the uh, aggressive expansion impact doesn't make much of a difference now, but it's better to have it than not to have it, right? That being said, of course, I'm going to call a crusade against the Ottomans again, so it's cheaper for me to annex these provinces. I am going to be changing one of my reforms here. I'm going to go for the Diplo relation slots instead of the uh, reform progress growth because I, I really am struggling with my Diplo relations. Because of that the particular reform though, I'm only getting minus three Diplo per month instead of minus four now. So it's going to help massively in the long term. Another day, another war against the auto bros. A very recurrent theme in our particular playthrough. <laughs> I've also been using a lot of my mana points to develop provinces and I'm fairly close to getting 50% uh, crownlands. Remember you get 0.2 crownlands for every time you click the dev button. So let's do a little bit more developing now. Boomium boom boom skurum purum purum chum boom. That's um that's what you need to say when you develop stuff. Almost there. I think we might have it now. Yep, we got 52%. Absolutely amazing. Boom shakaloki boys, we changed from the feudal nobility to the system of councils, tier one government and reform enabling the system of council mechanics as well as diplo relations plus two. Oh god i should have done this a lot earlier holy mother of god now i'm only losing one diplo i have 10 diplo relations boys why did i not do this earlier that means i can also release syria now holy snaps is what happens when you don't pay attention, chat. But yeah, the uh, system of councils has three different interactions. The first one, the royal council, gives you monthly admin power plus one, and it lets you choose between either advisor cost reduction, interest reduction, and inflation reduction, or missionaries once you click this particular interaction. Council of state gives diplo, and council of war gives military, and each of them have their unique options that you can choose from. And these are really good because they offer a little bit of everything, whether you want to go colonial or you want to go full warfare or whatever the schnapps you will have something that will help you out plus now we can also get rid of this particular horrible privilege the factionalist nobility because we got 50 percent crownlands oh that was not smart ottomans hiding in this particular province pretty much guarantees that i can stack wipe you now wait what hold on a freaking second here boys hold on a second they're still guaranteeing the independence of ragusa bro no coalition because nobody gives a schnapps about the auto bros and the best part is that we reset the truce by attacking Ragusa here because look at this the Ottomans actually would come to their aid and it's time for round number two electric boogaloo now question is am I going to use this to annex provinces or am I just going to get the five years truce to reset this war yeah I'll just get a white piece so I can reset the truce make it faster so I can fully annex them in the next war or not fully annex them it's 106 they're going to have one province left I guess probably the province over here in the north oh I can get my first interaction here let's see what are we going to go for diplo power military power or admin power i feel like diplo power is what i really need right now let's go for the diplo reputation plus two should come in massive help with uh, integrating the byzantines faster now holy mother of god i just remembered i actually get five percent admin efficiency from having council consensus at 100 so it means i can take more provinces in wars now psst, psst, hey 
Hey, you want some, uh, Syrian cores? Because we just released Syria, boys. Oh my god, yes. Thank you very much. Diplomatic station cost minus 15% is huge. It means we can start integrating Florence after we finish with Byzantium. Oh, we just finished Byzantium. That just went from 90% to 109% because of that particular event. Meaning we got the Byzantine lands directly owned by us now. Only thing left out of the Vassal Swarm is Morocco and Florence, I guess. And Milan too, actually. And I have to say, I am pretty freaking proud of Brandenburg. Look how massive Brandenburg just got. I feel like they deserve a little bit of support. I might send them some cash oh they're at war with goslar too oh okay i see what's going on they're super expansion mode aren't they it's almost as if they're asking me to play as them in the next video in this uh particular patch huh wait what did the mamluks just invade sardinia out of all the places you could have invaded sardinia is like the biggest death trap ever because your army here means i'm gonna send my fleet crush you and then i you you got nothing to defend yourself with bro please don't tell me i'm gonna actually lose this please don't tell me i'm gonna lose I'm, i lost this in night i lost the naval battle guys remember earlier in the campaign how i said that uh, castile is extremely versatile well this just proves it right here look at the amount of permanent claims we got on the new world basically the entirety of uh, the peruvian bits uh, south american bits really and we even managed to get explorers and conquistadors from missions and from events which means we can explore and uh, conquer the new world without even having gone for exploration ideas granted it did help that we got the portuguese to do most of the heavy lifting for us but that's why you know they're my personal unit now, I think this is all the provinces that we need from uh, the uh, Moroccans. I mean, the Mamluks. Did I just say the Moroccans? I meant the Mamluks, okay? The Mamluks. Up next, we're going to be attacking uh, Karakoyunlu, and we're going to attack them actually right now. Let's go. No need to delay with anything. Let's actually get another army group as well. We need to get some more units in here. Hey, truce is over with the uh, Ottomans too, since uh, we did that little sneakerico via Ragusa. As expected, we cannot take the northern bits here. We're uh, restricted to the actual Anatolian provinces that they have. But that's fine, because I actually don't really care about the uh, Crimean bits. We don't need that to form the Roman Empire, do we? Wait, what? The Danes have been colonizing the New World this whole freaking time. Really now, Denmark? So, I know that technically this is not Syria, and that I could also release Iraq and feed back Iraq its cores, but I'm not that desperate. I'm just gonna give all this stuff to Syria, and I'm gonna let the Syrians core it up for me. I'm not gonna waste my admin points. Well, that's everything I need for forming the Roman Empire, right? Yep. Sadly, I do have a lot of overextension, so I kind of really need to chill, kill my rebels and so on. But that's that's on the table. We're doing that right now. Don't worry about it. I've been using the Mantuan War as a means of getting Cyprus and what's left of Venice under my control. Because remember, we need the uh, Roman Empire borders and that includes all of these islands as well. And since we've unlocked the third Diplo idea for influence, it's going to be significantly cheaper to annex everybody within our mass of vassal slash personal union swarm we get two diplo reputation and we get plus one of each mana points for our monarch but my monarch's already 663 so if i get this particular mission done now i kind of waste the mana points don't i because my air is pretty trash 224 i am going to probably disinherit this air and wait for something better maybe let's see but just for the purpose of this video i am going to click this right now all right boys with the conquest of the genoese we only have one province left in order to form the Roman Empire, well, two provinces, Rome and London and York. So I guess three provinces. Never mind. The point is that we gotten all of this by 1526. And in five years, when the truce is over with uh, the Papal States, I can take the city of Rome. And five years is more than enough to take care of the English, which have a significantly smaller fleet than I have as it is. They only have 55 ships compared to the 300 plus that I have all together with all of my PUs. So crossing into the English lines is not an issue. But before anything, we can do the Fecho del Imperio that offers until the end of the game Diplo annexation cost minus 25% and governing capacity modifier plus 10% as well as it extends our current golden era which is set to end in 33 by another 360 months which is going to end in 63. We should just form Spain now that um, I mentioned Spain. Let's go ahead and strengthen government which is the only thing we need and that means we can inherit Aragon, get the new Spanish traditions and ambitions 
stations as well in the meanwhile and until the end of the game we can also get this beautiful papal influence and missionary strength modifier the spanish ideas having retained the plus one artillery fire is a massive deal too and the best part honestly is looking at the map and seeing how beautiful we are 1526 having all of these and honestly i didn't even try hard it too much i know that there's people that can do this a lot faster i would even wager that i can do it 40 years faster myself as the ottomans in 1.35 i really hope you guys enjoy this particular run i had a lot of fun and i'm really grateful to pdx for offering me the early access to enjoy the game i have to come clean though i was checking the editing at the start of this particular video and i said that i restarted like nine times i actually restarted another two Two times after I did that intro and I out there for it a few times when I had some really bad events so it is what it is I did want to have a good run and I did have a pretty good run I like to redo this run in the future and maybe go full-on colonial see how uh, the Castilians fare when you go full-on colonial since their mission tree also has a lot of colonial stuff that I haven't really touched that much upon and guys if you use the link in the description to get domination DLC for yourself you would really help out the channel so much and I would really appreciate it so consider doing so and until the next time check out this awesome Ottomans video and I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers I would not be able to do this without all your support 